Okay, it says we're live. Well, I gotta wait a few minutes here to see if we actually are live. It says that we're live. So welcome everybody. Uh, happy Thursday. We're a couple of weeks before the holidays or actually we're in the holiday season. So we welcome you to another week of uh, the Inspired By with Free Spirit Fabrics. I'm Sharon Thornton, I'm here this week and we're very excited we have one of our um, new Free Spirit designers with us this week, Lorraine Turner. And so we will be talking this week about her new collection, Migration, which is shipping January 2021 to local quilt shops. So we're hoping that you feel inspired after today's uh, program and that you are, have all kinds of ideas. Lorraine has all kinds of things to share with us today. So we're really excited to have her and we're all glad that you're here joining us. Uh, as always, we ask you to send us thumbs up, send us hearts, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. We always love to know where you're tuning in from. And uh, we, we welcome everybody. We, we, it's amazing to see that we have people from all over the world joining, joining us um, on different weeks and all over the, the country here in the States. So thank you. And we're, we're happy that you come in and visit with us every week. Um, as you know, the Inspired By is we're always trying to talk about how Free Spirit Fabrics have inspired you to create. And so every week when we have a guest on, we're always, you know, trying to share somebody else's perspective of Free Spirit Fabrics and what it is um, that motivates them to use Free Spirit Fabrics. And so that's why this week is special having Lorraine, because she's going to be coming at it from a completely different way as the designer of the fabrics. But nonetheless, she's a quilter and she's going to be able to share all kinds of insight of where she's coming from. So we're excited about that. Um, I'd like to let you know that this will, if you tune in late, we always post this to our Facebook page. We post this to our Instagram page and we post this to our YouTube channel. And Lorraine will also be posting this to all of her social media platforms as well. You can find us at freespiritfabrics.com. And you can find Lorraine, any information that you want on Lorraine at calicohorses.com. Um, and I'm sure that Lorraine and I will be sharing that information with you more as we go through this. So I just want to let you know up front that that's what we're doing. Um, we have Nancy Jewell and Lindsay Dryden on for Free Spirit Fabrics. They're going to be answering any questions that come up. They'll be posting links as we go. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in, you know, send us the questions. If Lorraine has an answer to question as she tells us, you know, all about herself and all about this next collection that um, is delivering in January of 2021. Um, we will answer those questions. We'll do our best to answer those questions. And if we don't answer them while we're on or through links or anything like that while we're on, we will come in afterwards and we will answer those questions to the best of our abilities afterwards. So um, let me see. So Lorraine, I'm going to turn this over to you. I'm going to um, actually, I think we've both been on, as a matter of fact. I don't think I did spotlight video, so I think we've both been on. <laughs> so I think I made a little mistake this week. But anyways, uh, glad that everybody got to see you already. Um, I'm going to spotlight video to Lorraine, so she will be on alone. And Lorraine, welcome. <laughs> um, you are a spotlight video now. And uh, we welcome you. We are thrilled to have you as a free spirit designer, um, not only on Inspired By, but as a free spirit designer. We're very happy to have you as part of the team. And uh, we would love to hear about your background. We would love to hear about how you, you know, what, what brought you to fabric designing, uh, you know, how long have you been quilting and just anything that you can share or you're willing to share about yourself, we would love to hear. We know that you have a great, um, exciting magazine cover to share with mm. us as well. Mm -hmm. So well, I take it away. <laughs> thank you, Sharon. And I just want to say before I even begin that um, this team makes me look good. So I want to shout out to my free spirit staff. They're all behind the curtains there. They're not going to step forward, but those guys make me look good. I am a new designer. I've been designing graphic design for 40, well, four decades and four years as a textile artist. I am a textile illustrator. How did this all begin? Let me take it back, all the way back. 1800s, late 1800s, a man named Carl Raithy immigrated to America from Alsace-Lorraine, France. He became a tailor in the Chicago Opera House. He met a woman named Lena Shoulder, 
fell in love and the two of them married and moved to Philadelphia. They had five children. One of them was an awning seamstress. She was an amazing seamstress. She married a gentleman named Roscoe St. Elmo Turner. Yeah, you can't make this up. Roscoe St. Elmo Turner. They got married, had five kids. Um, and one of them was George Turner, who was an upholsterer. He fell in love with a wonderful a seamstress. She did embroidery, hand embroidery work. They married, had eight kids in Linwood, New Jersey, and I'm number five. So wow. there's my background. That's I a have big family, Lorraine. <laughs> I got a big family and I have a lot of wonderful, talented siblings. And uh, my I'm sister Patty's sure. one of them. Well, wow, so, you have a lot of family background of uh, very I talented. didn't know it. I'll tell you what, Ancestry.com, everybody, go to Ancestry.com. I learned so much to my genealogy. I had no idea I had such, I mean, I knew I had talent in the family because my dad was an upholsterer and I watched and I heard all the stories. But when I really dug into it, I saw this wonderful genetic bloodline that has come through and i'm thrilled i'm really yeah, happy that's that. fantastic wow great great line so you're yeah. you're good blood <laughs> good blood yeah so i so as a designer um I, I you know i always wanted to be an artist i was very young drawing and at a very young age i was told i wasn't good enough to do this i would never make it as an artist so don't even bother trying Mm -hmm. I can tell you I was 16 at the time and 16 years later, I finished at the top of my class at Art Institute of Philadelphia and I went on to win two Emmys for my work in animation and television for the Philadelphia 76ers. So wow. uh, don't ever let anybody stop you. Don't ever listen to any outside voices and just uh, tune in to what you know and tune into your inner voice because that's what happened with me. So I was a graphic designer, have been a graphic designer. Um, I started doing, uh, uh, became an art director. My husband's business is the Library of American Comics and comics influences my art and you're gonna see it in my art and I'll explain to you how that happens. Now, the Library of American Comics does archival newspaper reproduction of books, hardbound cover books. What volume is this? How many volumes have we done? 18 volumes and this is just one of them. He's, we've published over 200 books. So this is just one of them, Annie. And we did all the way up to the current comics. So here's Star Wars. We do oh, Star Wars. Cool. Yeah. So this is the work that we do. And then Flash Gordon, I did this cover. It's a big book. We call this the Champagne Edition. Wow. So this is all the old, old comics. So we're talking 1915 up doing right. the comics. So we won some awards. Ooh. <laughs> I, I guess you have. Look at that. We won some awards. Yes, I can't take anymore. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. So anyway, that you know, that just happens. You know, we didn't. I didn't plan that. That's right. really really nice. So that's my background, and so I am a graphic designer. I ended up working in comics, and that gave me that. It, it really influenced my art. In 2014, with doing all of this work, we're talking 2014. Yeah, 2014 about that. I was having a hard time with, um, I had a lot of deadlines. And you know, Sharon, you know what work in a free spirit, there's deadlines and they yes. are crashing on us. I'm happy to say I haven't blown a deadline yet. Um, and I'm 65, hello, 65. I'm really oh. happy about that, proud of that. I haven't blown a deadline. But in 2014, I was dealing with so many deadlines and, and working with so many different uh, jobs that I started to have insomnia. I was uh, sick all the time and I wasn't doing well at all. So I taught myself not to think because when you're doing creative work like this, your mind is constantly going to all the projects and meditation for me was a lifesaver. I would go into my room 15 minutes a day, no music, no, hmm, no sitting positions, just silence, just quiet silence because I had to stop thinking. And what that did is that brought me images, sounds, feelings through meditation. And some of the things that it brought me were it's hard to believe, wild horses. Wild horses, calico horses were the largest, I found this out after I did this meditation, the horses kept coming to me. It's the largest botched roundup in the United States. And I was meditating, horses were coming to me, it was really strange, I know. And I went to Nevada to learn about the real calico horses, horses that were named calico horses in Calico Mountains, Nevada. I had no idea, I was just in my room meditating. And so that started me down the path as a writer. So I'm a writer, I'm published two books. One was on meditation. Mm -hmm. One is a, a novel that I wrote, The Calico Horses, and that was in 2014. 
So while I was doing all of that, I studied meditation more. I started getting more images. I'm not a pet psychic, but I'm someone that's like a horse whisperer. I tune into animals. So in 2015, this is a year later, I was a professional animal communicator, now certified working with animals from all over the world with just a photograph. That's how I work. In 2015, I found myself in South Africa working with white lions and in the meditation and in the communication, helping white lions that were that were really uh, not doing too well. So while we, the professionals, were brought in to talk to the white lions, um, I had a communication with the lion and it told me that I would be doing artwork, textile design to support endangered animals. Now, wow. it was mind blowing because I saw my own illustrations and I'd never done textile art in my life. So I saw the illustrations, I came home from, you know, I come back to America, I tell my husband, so listen, had a conversation with a lion, said I'm gonna be doing textile, it's gonna go. And I did, I started doing it. So I'd never done it before. And I started felting and making little sculpted lions and I made felted uh, pictures of them. And that fast forward to 20, I think it was 2017, I got a phone call because now I'm, you know, I'm showing my work and I'm sharing my work and I'm selling art to help endangered animals. And um, I got a call from Houston, Texas, and it was the um, International Quilt Festival. And I didn't know who they were. I'd never heard of them. I didn't know what it was all about. I'd never been to a quilt show in my life. And they asked me if I'd like to put a proposal in for a special exhibit. Wow. <laughs> like, what's that? Amazing. What's that? What's a special exhibit? <laughs> so. That's what the pieces behind me. Those were in the quilt and the uh, quilt show in Houston. That was in 2018. That show. So that was fall and of 2018. That right? was fall of 2018, and that's where I met with Free Spirit because by that time I had been in Machine Quilting Unlimited did a spread on me. Now all of a sudden Ricky Tim's interviewed me. Like what happened? I can't explain to you. The only thing I can say this show is called Be Inspired, right? Inspired by. Been inspired by. Yep inspired by so whatever makes your heart sing what calls to you follow it tune into that i'm not i, I didn't have to have a, a lesson or uh, have a special training to do this i'm an artist so i just what i did is i just switched mediums you are seeing me painting and drawing using fabrics and textiles most of the textiles i use were free spirit free spirit was a natural connection for me because i was already using their fibers and i was familiar with them and as I'm going to show you the pieces behind me, and let's just talk about it because I am a textile illustrator. This is the cover. So this was just Quilting Arts Magazine, just, just out. Right. And you don't know you're going to be on the cover. You get, a, you get an email that says, Dear Cover Girl. That's how you find out. <laughs> and <you're laughs> I like, had no idea. Where am I a cover girl? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, 65 and I'm a cover girl. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's so totally awesome. So congratulations. This is awesome. Now look at that. That's beautiful. So Lorraine, you're saying that that piece and the piece next to it were the two pieces that were at International Quilt Festival in fall of 2018. Is that correct? We can't hear you. We, Lorraine, we can't hear you. Oh. Accidentally. I think it accidentally muted. Oh, okay. So now we can hear you. Let's try it again without muting anybody. So you'll see Philip Jacobs in here. I love that Roaring Twenties fabric. Oh yeah, I love that too. Yeah. So, so this was created. I'm sorry, go ahead. This was created for the, the special exhibit and they accepted this exhibit without this even drawn yet. I mean, I had, I had pencil sketches and they said, we want it. Wow. <laughs> so that's what you're seeing behind me is I am a textile illustrator. So that's all thread. Right. Look at that. And a lot of embellishment. I use doilies and cut up lace and this is all custom. So Lorraine, let me ask you a question. I mean, the work on this is absolutely amazing. Um, how trip. long could you guesstimate how long it takes you to work on? We, we don't want you to go away from those pieces just yet, but like when you started working on both of those pieces, how long would you say it took? I mean, did it take you, you know, six months, a year, three months? I mean, on and off for a year? I don't I mean, even want to tell you because if I start telling people, they're going to want things like this. But oh. <laughs> I mean, Houston said to me, Lorraine, your deadline's July. And I said, I'm going to Italy to teach a class in May. So that I haven't even started the piece yet. And oh, they're wow. like, well, 
well, your deadline is now, um, can you do it by September 7th? And I'm like, okay, it got me from July to September. And I wow. did it. I did these two pieces. They're about wow. five feet. That's Huge pieces. Impressive. Dean, can you hand me these pieces, please? Yeah, these so I, I didn't mention early on that Dean, um, Lorraine's husband is in the background. He's he's a sick thing. He's her Vanna White. <laughs> so this is just more examples of what fabric collage with textiles with texture looks like. And again, right. this is just coming from meditation. So all of my inspiration, Sharon and company, comes from me meditating and the animals come forward. I say, if there's an animal that wishes to have their portrait, please make yourself known to me. The wow. animals step forward. Wow. The Black Panther. Amazing. from the rainforest yes. and so i do his portrait and then the work is sold to support the black panther or the animals this is the uh, some penguins this oh, is from the bottom of my heart so this is all fussy cutting this is all fussy cutting and that's why as a fabric designer i'm paying special attention to fussy cutting because i use it a lot in my work thank you very much so that's where i that who's who i am so i'm not your average quilter i came to this as a textile artist, I'm an artist that stepped into a new medium. That's what I did. And of course, I, you know, it's a natural thing for me. I went right there into threads. Here's my thread collection from Aurifil. Wow. And if you look at these colors, and if you look at my lines of fabric, these colors will work in every line because I work in brights. That's how I work. And again, that comes from a comics influence. I've learned that through the work that I'm doing that in order to really tell the story, you exaggerate. I came out with my own line of RFL. This is for just adding texture. That's what it's called, a splash of texture. These are all 12 weight. Wow, very nice. Get, get you do a lot of up. hand work, Lorraine? Or? I absolutely love it, Sharon. I, I just realized how much I miss not touching fabrics. I've been working and I don't, I, I don't think I'm so, okay. I don't think I'm allowed to say this. I'm already working for She Spirit because we always work ahead. And I haven't touched any fabric because I've been busy drawing and creating design so right. now woohoo i can play with fibers and threads again and i love to do handwork absolutely love it i yeah. think it's one of the things that if you if you really want to take your your art to another level let's just say you've been doing uh different art quilts and you love art quilts and you uh like to follow other different quilting arts and you get the magazine and you follow other artists and you're just that there's just one thing that you feel like you you're missing on try adding some handwork I don't watch television. I detox from television in 2005, I'm happy to say. So I've got a lot of time on my hands. People think I'm a prolific artist and that I seem to like not sleep. I really have learned to have good time management and I just don't waste time with television. I think it's, well, it's a boob tube for, for me personally. I just don't want anything to do with it. And I read, I can listen to music and I can do handwork. I love right. doing handwork. Right, very therapeutic. So, so we want to talk about the fabrics now? Of course, we want to talk about the fabrics. Well, I mean, questions? well, I'm, I'm scanning through and it looks, we've got a lot of very positive comments in here. Congratulations on all the awards. Christina Stark <laughs> says, just gorgeous. Um, absolutely amazing, exquisite work. Those are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Stephanie Hardy says, very, very complimentary. People are sending a very, very thank you. Uh, getting thumbs up and hearts of all your work. So thank, thank you. you. Everyone's thank loving you. it so far. Um, so Lorraine, you you have those pieces behind you. Those are the pieces you started with, as you said, in 2018. Mm -hmm. And now, I, I mean, I just want to kind of do a little timeline for everybody. So now mm -hmm. in 2020, you're on the cover of a, a great magazine with those pieces yes. of work. Yes. So that's pretty amazing. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Different and I award. also was and I was also on PBS. I'm on PBS right now. I'm on Quilting Arts TV. And oh, wow. um we flew out there, filmed it and the pandemic, I mean this was in March, wasn't it? It was March. It was like they, we were at the airport when the when the news broke and things were really shutting down. And we yeah. just got like under the wire with that. And I filmed three segments with that. But Sharon, that's the whole point of this is that I never set out to do this to say, and I, and I want to speak to people that are watching this because I know a lot of you um, wonder about this. Like, how does this all happen? Like, I'm not going to tell you how it happens. I can only tell you that you must really, truly do what you love to do. When I want to learn how to do something I've never done before, and we can, you know, I, I'm a Bernina ambassador now doing incredible things in the Bernina because I gave it a shot. 
And that's what I'm saying. I gave it a shot. You know, a lion told me in 2015 I was going to be doing this. I could have said, a lion told me I'm going to be doing this. Are you kidding me? Really? But I didn't. I said, okay, lion, I'm going to give it a shot. So that's what I'm saying to you is I want you to just understand it. And don't look at age. Don't look at age. Look how old I am. This is just, this is like four years ago. You just have to believe in yourself. And I'm real strong believer of uh, thoughts are living things and follow through on the thoughts. The thought has to land and they could be positive or negative thoughts. That's why I wrote the book on meditation to help people, to help people understand that. Uh, remember I said to you, I needed to stop thinking because I didn't want any outside interference. I didn't want noise. I didn't want everybody else's opinion. So I stopped and I took some pause time. And when I do that, all of this comes forward. Every single piece of art you see came in meditation. Wow. So that's, that's where I get my inspiration. Well, honestly, that's inspirational. I love how you said, you know, take a pause time and to relax and clear, clear everything out. Cause you're right. You need to, to in order to be creative sometimes. So that's, I think, wonderful advice. And we all like to go, I mean, there's many of you, you like to do webinars. I teach webinars. I was teaching webinars long before the pandemic and I got so good at Zoom. By the time everybody else was on it, I was like, you know what, I need a break from Zoom because I've been doing it for a while. So right, for right. all of you that are, but you love to take tutorials, you love to read, you love to take, and I'm not telling you to stop. Don't, don't, I want you to understand me. What I'm saying to you is take a time out and absorb everything that you've done every webinar you've taken every workshop every book every tutorial every youtube that you've looked at stop go into your room turn it all off everything and say mm -hmm. okay how am i going to do it my way because you've been following all these people and i'm learning from people that they just go 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 but they're not applying what they've learned because they're too busy going after the next thing it's great i'm not telling you to stop i'm just telling you to pause mm -hmm. absorb it throw away what you don't need for your work and grab onto the things that you, that you really wow. need. I think that's great advice, Lorraine. That's very nice. Thank you for sharing that with us. Because You're I think welcome. it's very, very good. You're, <laughs> You're inspiring me to do a lot of things. <laughs> so let's talk about the fabric. How do yeah. I come up with a fabric line? You know, what do you do? Do you just sit home and go, oh, you know what? Uh, reindeers are nice, I'll do reindeers. That's not how it works for me. I work through meditation. So as a fabric designer, I'm telling you, I quiet my heart, I sit in silence, I step aside, and if nothing comes to me, then I don't design anything. It's not like I force it and go, oh, I'm gonna go do a rabbit. I just relax and migration came to me. Migration because migration represents, and I'm just gonna hold some of the migration pieces up so we'll talk about it. Migration represents a change. This could be for people, it could be for animals, it could be everything, it's not just animals. Migration represents and symbolizes a time of change. So that could be many things. These are the humpback whales. Do I have them right side up, Sharon? Yes, no, it looks beautiful, Lorraine. That fabric so is a, gorgeous. And I love that background that, uh, color, that's amazing. So that, you like that lipstick color? Yeah, the whales. Those are breaching whales. Beautiful. So, so normally when you see a fabric designer, and, and I believe me, I love to, to have natural animals too. Grays, blues, teals would be a normal. And if you look at fabric, you're probably going to see that, or you're going to see cutesy. There's nothing wrong with cutesy. You'll never see me do cutesy. What I'm doing is I'm honoring the images of the animals that come forward to me that say to me, I'm here for my portrait. <laughs> Right. So I can't just go, oh, you know, I'll stick a hat on it. You know, it's I'm right. always going to be able to be honest to the animal, true to the animal. So right. this is just one piece that's in the collection. Now, the animals, this particular animal migrates to Antarctica. I said it right. Antarctica. I can't get it right. Antarctica. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Antarctica. So it's on both polar regions. So when they take off and you see them when they're getting ready to move, they're going to be with icebergs. Wow. Now I wanted to give them icebergs that had reflection. So you have all those beautiful colors to work with. So they're realistic, but at the same time, they give you a look at that, pay attention to this. Look at this comics related strong brush strokes. You see that? That comes from my work in comics. I learned to exaggerate. So you're always gonna see me exaggerate with color to get that drama and that pop. Mm -hmm. And you can do that in your art too. I'm, I've been teaching people on, um, Ink tents, we're doing ink tents, pencils, you know, we're doing all kinds of stuff on the internet. 
and I'm teaching them how to really make their art sing just by exaggerating. So that's the icebergs that go with the humpback whales. It's a nice coordinating fabric. So let me get back to migration. So when I talked about migration, not just animals and people too, think of it as time in your life. And I'm gonna be real brief about this because I'm not gonna dwell on anything. But I was in a toxic relationship, 16 years in a toxic relationship. And I'm telling you, Sharon, I sent out my, I sent out my resume to every, South Dakota, I sent it everywhere. I'm from, I'm a Jersey girl. So I'm, in, I'm in the Northern region, region and I'm done. I'm, I gotta get out of here. I sent out my, my uh, resume, went all over the world. I get a call back on a Sunday. I'm not kidding. Key West, can you be here by Thursday? Wow. And I was like, okay, now I gotta tell my kids. No, what am I gonna do now? So I stuffed my summer clothes and my laptop into a little car. I drove 1,300 miles to the end of the earth. And I didn't know how to pump gas because in New Jersey, you, you can't pump gas. So when I stopped to pump the gas, I didn't know how to pump the gas. It's a big deal. Anyway, I got to Key West and I ended up finding a job, a, a job on Craigslist. I got a roommate on Craigslist. I was in a pub uh, saying uh, party at 10 and seating people. I mean, this I put this wow. high paying job to 76ers and I did it. Something told me, right? Move. Right. Now we're in a pandemic right now. Nobody's moving anywhere. But what I'm talking about is relational, financial, educational, geographical. There are times in your own life and I can't do it for you. You have to do it. People thought I was crazy. Look at me now. I'm right. living. You want to see where I'm living? Let me show you where I'm living. This is where I live. Wow. Look at that. What a view. What a view. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can see so why I you're inspired there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Inspiration right there. Nature. Exactly. But what I'm saying is something, there is something inside you. There's going to be a calling and you can, and their doors open and close. We know this, Sharon. Doors will open, doors close. This magazine is a door open. Okay. Right. I didn't ask for this. I didn't knock on anybody's door to get it. This door opened to me. Well, you are talking it. about beautiful you deserve thank it thank you but it's, it's not just i mean i'm just stop trying to say to you it can happen to anybody but you need to be true to yourself there you go write that down be true to yourself so by yeah. moving to key west and getting out of a toxic relationship i migrated so all i'm saying oh. is you can go in different directions with this so think of my fabrics when you look at these fabrics i want you to think of them not only the beautiful animals and you know how they're depicted here, but I want you to see the symbology in it. And I want you to feel that special, special tie in here. This is what the world looks like. I wanted to depict, what does the world look like? A worldview of all of the animals, insects, everybody on the move. What does that look like? Right. It's like a bird's so eye view. Yeah. It is, it is, but it's got like, it could be water currents. It could be air currents. See the currents? Yes, I definitely They're do. All flowing. And so this is a continent. You know, you'll see Australia in here. You're going to see North America. You're going to see the caribou that are up in Canada, the reindeer that are over across the ocean. You'll mm -hmm. see sea turtles and penguins and puffins and cranes and two types of whales are in here. This really is a great fabric, Sharon, for anybody that loves nature, loves to be outdoors, loves to travel. This is a great fabric when you want to see action this is a this is a great right. look at what happens in the world right there's a lot of movement migrate. yeah there's a lot of movement yep. in it and that one's yep. called migratory map perfect yep. this is the migratory map and this are the siberian these are the siberian cranes so this is that bird's eye view and i this is again how do i get to see this meditation how in the world would you be able to see this view of birds from looking down above them when they're in flight yeah. This is above wow. the birds looking down. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So beautiful, Lorraine. Your colors are amazing, too. Thank you. I love having all this fabric. I'm just so I know. I just came and I'm so excited. Oh, I always get emotional. I'm sorry. I'm an emotional person when it comes to fabric. I just can't tell you. Well, we're glad you are. That's awesome. I just love it. I hope everybody else loves fabric as much as I do because what would you do without fabric i know well right i well for me personally in my sewing room is my zen space so you Ooh, know it is. i like the sound of that well it is it's where i get back to myself look at that so 
May of let no two Mays ago, the puffins kept showing on in meditation, and I was called to Ireland, and I taught in Ireland and visited in Northern Ireland, and I went to the Rathlin Islands in North Northern Ireland, and this is where I met the puffins. Wow! So I put these are called friends in flight. Uh -huh. So you're going to see the monarchs in there, and you're yep. going to see the puffins. Now, the monarchs, I did in other colors. So I didn't want to just do the typical orange and black. I wanted to give you some hot pinks and some teals and blues and just have fun with it. And right. the same thing with the puffins. The puffins are black, white, and orange. But we, we can have more fun with puffins. We have exactly. them in all different colors. Lots exactly. of vibrant colors. This yes. is a really great one with, this is the butterfly bush. Now, my sister Patty, and she might be out there, I don't know. She designed a quilt, and we'll talk about that. Um, Patty told me about this new plant that maybe it's not new, but it was a tri-colored butterfly bush, and the butterflies love it. And I saw a picture of it, and I was like, "Oh, I absolutely love this plant." And so this is what the this is what uh, attracts butterflies, and it is perfect for this line. Mm -hmm. You can see how nice it looks. With it. Yeah, that that's all your fabrics coordinate so beautifully together. So I mean, they're fantastic. Fun, Sharon. It's like playing. Yes, it's like it is. coloring like a kid with a big box of crayons. Right. We love artists like you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the coordinating fabric that goes with that. And this is all the pet, like the wings of the monarchs, and then all the dots that you see. It just, mm -hmm. it just worked well. The fun fabric. I love Beautiful. the fabric. I cannot wait to play with it. Well, we can't wait to see what you create with it. Do you have something? <laughs> Has something come to you yet? Something has come, it's just recently that it's come. Oh. And I think you're gonna, and as a matter of fact, the thing that's scary about it, Sharon, though, it was as big as uh, Susan Carlson's alligator. And I was like, do I have <laughs> enough time and energy to put into this? Because it was really big. It's not an alligator, but it's that big. Wow. wow. This is animal tracks. So the animal tracks, how this beautiful. is a wonderful fabric. You can use this with many, many different, as a blender fabric, but it's again, Sharon, it's movement. Everything's on the move. Mm -hmm. and, that, you, and I've great. got all different, all different yeah. uh, species are represented in here. Right. And we did that in two colorways. Wow, that's beautiful too. And I had to get some horseshoes in there. Now, you know, I'm about wild horses and wild horses don't have horseshoes, but I had to get them in there. So that's oh, how I, I see them. Yeah, <laughs> I see them. That, that's brilliant. I didn't see that before until you just called it out. <laughs> this one is a little unusual for me because I never, like when I design with fabrics, I don't normally do stripes, but look at this. Oh. I know. That really is great. I love that. And hopefully people will love it because you can make, look at, you know what's nice about this fabric, Sharon? It's great for home decor. It's great for apparel. It's great for bags and purses and quilting. There's a lot mm -hmm. you can do with this. Yes, yes, it's beautiful. And the colors throughout are just stunning. I had a lot yeah, of fun with this piece. Great rainbow in there. And you know what's really nice about this, Sharon, is that the, the, uh, the team in, that we have that do our printing at the mill, they do such an amazing wow. job that when when the strike-offs, well, when they hit me with these, very, it's very, very few times that I've seen uh, the team, the Free Spirit team, have to send something back or correct something. It's, it's, it's min I would have to say, just for me as a designer, it's been minimal for me. I've, I've been very thrilled. Great. Awesome. Great. Well, the Free Spirit Fabrics does have a fantastic design team. I will say that. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm telling yes. you, they make us, they they make the us look great. Well, they're a very they're talented good. group of people. We're lucky to have them with us. So every year, two million, two million animals migrate in Kenya. I love this fabric. Serengeti. And yeah. this represents, I'm so, I'm so glad you like it. I love this fabric. I do, so I this love has it. baobab tree, it has the acacia tree, it has animals on the move. You see the birds in flight. It's a multi-directional fabric. It's got them in different sizes and it's just a real fun piece. And it's really, this one's dear to my heart because I know that the animals, this particular animal here struggles when they take their children and they take their families and they have to cross alligators to get to water and to grazing land and to breeding grounds. They know that this is, a, this is an instinct that these animals know that some of them aren't gonna make it. 
And so when I did this, this was really an honoring thing. And I did meet the wildebeest when I was in South Africa and they have come to me in meditation and they were a very important part of this line. So mm -hmm. I'm very thrilled. And again, let's look at that comic related, see that? Yeah. That, that strong, bold line that you'll, you know, you're always gonna see in the work. And that's what's nice about this, Sharon, is this is gonna go great with um, calico horses. The fab, if you look at the color scheme, if you look at the way it's drawn, they blend very well together. Yes, that's very smart that you do that. This is my last skew. I'm pretty happy about this one. This one, I remember when I showed Debbie Stark, when I met her in Houston, I was showing her my sketches for my new line. And I know I showed her this, and she looked at it, and it was almost as if she was saying, okay, what, where are we going with this? <laughs> but it is an overhead view, and it's called overhead terrain. Now I travel a lot and I'm always coming down in a plane from somewhere over mountains, over water, over, you know, all different, different topography. And it just looked to me like a great fabric. It is a great fabric. I mean, you can cut that up in any way, shape or form and you've got something very interesting. So it's not, you know, it, that's fun. fantastic. Yeah. And the color, the colors are exquisite. I mean, it's just amazing. So that. think of think of hikers, canoers, you know, travel, outdoorsmen, campers. I think you can have fun with this piece. Yes, absolutely. So there's a canyon in it, and even the, the shards of the mountain are, are just like I don't know, chunks of and this is the this is the canyon that's going around here. Mm -hmm. and all the trees and the rocks. You've got some rocks in here. But this is just one of those, I think. I think this is going to be a fun piece for a lot of people that when they see it, they're going to go, oh, I know what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, it, it, there's a lot of that available in this collection where, oh, I know what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So, so those are my fabrics. Well, those fabrics are amazing. Thank you for sharing them with us. And You're um, welcome. I know that you've been inspirational to many here. They've said exquisite work fantastic creative down-to-earth giving woman uh, that's Gwen uh, Gopal uh -huh. um, let me see I'm not even going to try the pronunciation of this name but she asked do you use the brush and the colors after installing the fabric do I use the brush and the colors I don't really know what do you use the brush and the colors after I'm not quite sure I'm sorry I don't know what that how I don't know if she means in the art. So you, I start with a palette. I start with a palette of color. She might be asking me for the whole overall line. I'm not really sure. And I'm going to answer this. And if it's incorrect, please um, feel free to, to write another question and, and, and do a follow up. But if you're asking me how I pick the colors, again, I am drawn to certain colors. I'm drawn to it when the animals come to me. I see color and I use that what I see. Now, some things to me are vibrating and I have to change before even free spirit sees that I make my own changes and my edits here. But as far as the, the harmony of the color, it's, I mean, look at behind me. You're always gonna see me using bright colors and a lot of these fabrics are free spirit. So it's such a, a natural thing for me to go in that direction. So I lay out my palette with the colors that I'm gonna choose and I go and I illustrate. So that whole thing, that overhead terrain, teals and blues and pinks and and magenta and navy and purple. That's all in my palette for my paintbrush. And I draw on the computer. I use a Cintiq Wacom. It's 27 inch. I have a special pen and I draw right on the computer. Again, this is my background. So it was something that was very natural for me to just go ahead and draw for the fabric design. Wow. I'm, I'm, as you know, I haven't been a fabric designer very long. for very long. I am an illustrator, I am an artist. And so to make that step into fabrics, design took me a little hand holding from the team here at free spirit they knew I, they knew i could design they knew i could draw they knew all of that but it's a different step when you're going to be working with quilters when I mean, you're going to be working with people that want to fussy cut i mean right. i know what i like right but right. i have to i have to be able to portray and give you the public something that you can get excited about right so i think well, if that's what you're asking me that's what i do i i get those colors down and and they, and they change along the way right no, I think that that's a great answer because I think that that's what she was asking. Um, love the stripes. They love the stripes. Your fabrics are awesome. Love the vibrant colors. So joyful. Um, 
There's a question, when's migration coming out? It's coming out in January of 2021 to your local quilt shop. So please reach out to them or come to the Free Spirit website, freespiritfabrics.com. You can send us your questions about that. Um, so many things I could make with that. That would make a beautiful border for a quilt. That's true, great idea. Um, like how you're calling out the movement of the fabrics. Uh, oh, somebody else loves the wildebeest in orange. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, let me see, do you have horse fabrics? Yes, that was the previous line. That was my, that was my line. So you might, see a, you might see a similarity between the calico horses and this line. That's, I think, you, I, think, I think every time you learn to see an illustrator know it's their work. Right, right. Um, let me see. Uh, Jennifer Morlock says, love it. Can't wait to have this in my studio. So you're getting a lot of props here. You know, we've got a lot of uh, viewers that we have on today. Love it. And they're very excited about it. So good. thank you, Lorraine, That's for good. sharing you're it with welcome. us. You're welcome. So I'm going to take you off of stop spotlight video now. Let me see. I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions. Oh, Cindy uh, got, oh, again, I'm not good with last names. Cindy Gaikax. Yes, working in her calico horse fabric now. So you know, Cindy? Yes, I do. So she's, she's working in your calico horse fabric right now. And look, oh my gosh, I have horses. Oh, you do. Yeah, I'm doing the, I'm, I'm spearheading a nonprofit for foster children and adult daycares. And I have spearheaded this and I have people from around the world. I've produced a free pattern. You can get it on my website. And they are making these little herd for hugs and they're going to be uh, delivered Valentine's Day to foster children and adults in daycare and nursing mm. and home. And um, I came to me two years ago in meditation, meditation, everybody get the book. Anyway, go <laughs> meditate. And, I, and I'm, so I'm doing this and it's a free pattern. It's on my website, but I have a ton of people that are excited to be able to do something other than make a mask. So. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Uh, we're all, um, oh, here's a question. Are your colors symbolic of something, any emotions or feelings, or how do you choose your color in your design? Well, as you know, well, maybe you don't know, but if, if you know anything about energy and the body, you have chakras. So that means you have energy points and each one of them has a color association to it. So uh, creativity comes from one area and your heart chakra is green or pink, it's in this area. When I work with, as far as symbology is concerned, don't look at my fabrics to say, oh, well, every time Lorraine uses purple, she's upset. I mean, I don't have any of that kind of uh, <laughs> symbology. What I do have is always honor the animal. My work supports endangered animals worldwide. My free spirit fabrics, the art you see behind me, I have prints and note cards and everything from these animals. And I've been doing this since 2015 when a lion told me to give this away to the endangered animals. So when you see these colors or when you look at my art, Understand that what I'm trying to do is give you something fun to play with, like a kid, and also that I'm honoring the animal, so you're never going to see cutesy from me. Right. Well, that, that that's great insight. Thank you, Lorraine. So, um, one question that we'd like to ask our viewers today is: we have, and I'll I'll show the fabrics again at the end. Lorraine, you're still on spotlight, just so that mm -hmm. you know. Um, so every week we always give away some fabric. And so this week we're going to give away, um, which we are very excited about. Um, we're going to, there are going to be two winners this week and they are going to get half yard cuts of all the 12 SKUs that Lorraine just showed us. So yeah, they're lucky. Um, <laughs> and the fabric is shipping to stores in January. So, um, please again, reach out to the quilt, quilt your local quilt shop, ask them if, uh, you know, if, if they're going to be carrying the line or where you can get the line. But in order to win these two 12 half yard cuts of fabric, our question this week is some designers donate a portion of royalties um, of, like Lorraine just said, of her fabric line um, to, a, to a cause. Does this matter to you when you're purchasing fabric? So we would like to know if you know, Lorraine, I, I think that that's a wonderful cause. You, you do it all for the animals and you donate your proceeds to endangered species. We'd like to know from our uh, quilters and our fabric friends out there, is this important to you when you're purchasing fabric? We would like to know if, you know, you're purchasing it because of that or it motivates you to purchase because of that. 
um, we just like to hear from you and what your thoughts are on that. And Lorraine, I think that it's a wonderful cause. I mean, I think that your story is uh, fantastic. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank it's you, Sharon. Thank I mean, it's inspirational, you know, to know that you already use free spirit fabrics in your works and you show that, and now you become a free spirit designer. You, Hard to you, believe. Right? right? I mean, who knew? I can't tell you. I'm just going to take a pause time out right now and tell you that I have to pinch myself when I start cutting fabric and create this art with my own designs. I, know. I had no idea this was going to happen. I know. I think boggling. It's wonderful. <laughs> so I think that that's awesome. So I'm just going to take you off of spotlight. So okay. now that I'm talking, they're going to see me. And when you're talking, they're going to see you. But before we go, I just want to have everyone look at the collection behind me. So, you know, Lorraine showed us all the SKUs individually, talked to us about, you know, her thought processes and how she gets to, to this place. But look at how beautifully the fabrics work behind me. I mean, they, they play so well off of one another. And I don't know, I'm at home too. I don't want to show you guys too much of my messy house. <laughs> but anyways, there are the fabrics and they, they look really beautiful. They have a, the great hand that Free Spirit Fabrics is known for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these, these fabrics are great. Lorraine, thank you so much for joining us this week. We are so happy to have you. Congratu congratulations on the Quilting art, Arts thank cover. You. I mean, thank that's you. like so fantastic. And what a My journey. My dad would say, that's a biggie, Lorraine. That's a biggie. Yes, well, your dad's <laughs> right. And, You've been very inspirational. Thank you so much. It's thank it's you great thank having you. you today, and I we look forward to seeing other lines that you do, and we'll have you back on in the future to share where your inspiration was drawn from. Very good. Thank you, Sean. So thank you, Lorraine, and thank you to everyone that has tuned in. As always, we thank you for joining us every week, and we would just like to say that we will be back on January second. So we're going out on a little bit of a holiday here, but we will be back on January second with more inspirational guests, uh, um, which everyone will be excited about once they find out who it is. And we wish everyone a happy holiday season and we will see you back then. So thank happy you. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.